Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about the equation of a circle. So I have the equation written right here. The equation of a circle in standard form would be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So that is the equation of the circle. Important components of that to recognize is that h, k is the circle center. So we'll look at actually graphing these in a different video. So that would be the point that falls exactly in the center of the circle. Notice this is minus h and minus k. So when we actually pull our center information out of this, we're going to end up flipping the sign. Whatever sign you see in here for h, so if this is like a negative 1, then we're actually going to pull out a positive 1. We'll see how that works in just a second. And then r is the radius. So when you see this r squared, r is the radius. So it can be a little tricky because we've got to think whatever number you see here is r squared. So we're going to then need to take the square root of that number to figure out what is r. I've also got two just kind of good reminders of formulas to remember over here. Area of a circle is area equals pi r squared, so we'll use that. And also circumference of a circle, circumference equals 2 pi r. So just get information when we get down to some of these later examples. So for these first three examples, they've given us equations that are in standard form, and we want to be able to say what is the center of the circle and what would the radius of the circle be. Looking at this first example, remember that h is the x value of the center. So in this case, we would think, okay, so h is 2, but we've got to remember that the formula is minus h, which means we actually need the opposite of positive 2. So when I find the center, my x value is minus 2. And when I look for the y value, the k, and I look in the place of k, I see a positive 1. But really, it's the opposite of that. It will be a negative 1. Now for our radius, right here we've got this 25. But remember, that 25 is r squared. So r squared equals 25. But we don't want to know r squared. We just want to know the radius. We just want to know r. How can I get rid of a square? Well, remember, anytime we have a square, a little 2, we can get rid of it by taking the square root. And when you do that, that gets rid of the little 2 and gets rid of the square root. They cancel each other out, and all you're left with is just r. But if you're going to take the square root of this side, you have to take the square root of the other side as well. So the square root of 25 is just 5, right? 5 times 5 is 25. And if you weren't sure about that, if you're like, how did you get 5? You can always check it on the calculator. So um, bringing out your graphing calculator, square root. So it's that little blue above the x squared. So square root of 25. And it'll tell you 5. So in this case, our center of the circle is negative 2, 1. And our radius would be 5. Let's do another one together. When we're looking for the center of the circle for this one, remember my x value is my h. So what's in the place of h? Negative 3. But we need the opposite sign of negative 3. So really it's going to be a positive 3. And then k is my y value. And what's in the place of k is a positive 7. So we need the opposite. We need a negative 7. Now my r squared, what's in the place of that? It's 36. So r squared equals 36. But we don't want to know r squared. We want to know just r. So we'll take the square root of r to get r alone. And we'll do the same on the other side. The square root of 36 is 6. So my center of my circle is 3, negative 7. And my radius is 6. Now when I take a look at this third example, you might notice it looks a little shorter than these do. And that could be confusing, like you're thinking, um, where is the minus h part, right? We've got our y with our minus k part, but where is our h part? The fact that it's not there tells you what h is. There's nothing 
4h, which tells you that when we find the center of the circle, your h or your x value is zero. So when you don't see something in the place of h, that tells you it's zero. And the same would go for k. If we just saw a y squared and it wasn't like y plus something or y minus something, that would tell you that k would be a zero. Now for my k in this case, I see I have with my y, I have a minus two, so we want the opposite, we want a positive two. And my r squared is four, but I don't wanna know r squared, I wanna know just r. So we take the square root of both sides and the square root of four is two. So the center of this circle would be zero, two, with a radius of two. Now for this next row, they've given us something a little different. They've told us the center, and they've told us the radius, and they want us to write an actual equation in standard form. So we want to follow this format and write an actual equation. So I know my center is negative 2, 6. So that tells me when I write this, I'm going to write parenthesis x. I'm just following this. And then it's negative 2. So remember, it's the opposite in the equation. So the opposite of negative 2 would be plus 2. And then we close our parenthesis and square it got our plus sign, next parenthesis, y, and then we have a positive 6, so we need to do the opposite and subtract 6 squared. And then remember that it's the radius squared, so in this case I have a radius of 3. So I would need to think, okay, what is 3 squared? What is three times three? And you could check it on your calculator, but three times three is nine. So that would be our standard form equation for a center of negative two, six, and a radius of three. Okay, for this next example, we also wanna write an equation in standard form, but the information we're given is a little different. So they told us the center of the circle, which is nice. They told us it was five, one. But then they've said the area is 16 pi. And you might be thinking, how in the world does that help us? Let's first set up the first half of the equation that we do know using this 5, 1, x, and then it's the opposite of the sign we see. So that's a positive 5, so we'd want to write minus 5 squared plus parenthesis y, and then it's a plus 1, so we need a minus 1 squared equals, and then it's just the r we're missing, right? We have enough information for this part, but it's how are we gonna figure out the R? So what we can do is use this information against itself to try to figure out what our R is. So remember the area of the circle is area equals pi R squared. So I'm gonna just do that down here. Area equals pi R squared. But we know the area. They're telling us the area is 16 pi. So here's how we can rewrite this. We can go, instead of writing area, we can write what the area is. 16 pi equals pi r squared. Now to get r alone, because now we can actually solve this for r. So to get r alone, we'd want to divide by pi, and that would cancel, and we'd want to divide by pi on the other side, and that would cancel. So now we're left with r squared equals 16. And remember, we actually want r squared here, right? Isn't the formula equals r squared? And now we have r squared. r squared is 16. So we can fill in our r squared. Looking at this last one, so it says the center of the circle falls at 3, 0. So we can go ahead and write the first part of the equation, no issue. And then it says the circumference is 10 pi. So we can definitely figure out our r squared information when they give us the circumference. So let's just write the first part of the equation that we, we definitely have enough information for. Remember that it's parenthesis x, and then that's a plus three, so we wanna do the minus three squared. And then we gotta be really careful here because it says that the y value is zero. So I could put a y minus zero squared, but Really, the proper way to do that is just going to be to leave out the k and just write a plus y squared. 
and it's the r squared now that we need a little help with. So let's think about that formula for circumference. So circumference equals two pi r. And we know the circumference, it's 10 pi. So let's rewrite that formula. So c equals two pi r, but we know c, it's 10 pi. So let's rewrite that, 10 pi equals two pi r. So if we wanted to just get r alone, we could divide by two pi so that that cancels, and then we divide the other side by two pi. The pi's cancel, and 10 divided by two is five. So at this point, we've got r equals five, but we have to be careful. We don't put a five there. Remember, what goes there is r squared. So we need to actually square r and if we square it on one side, we've got to square it on the other side. So r squared is 25. Sometimes we end up in a situation like with these two problems, where an equation is not in standard form. And we have to, and as this um, statement up top says, if the equation is not in standard form, you have to get the equation in standard form before finding the center and the radius. When I look at these, notice these are not in standard form. There's no parenthesis x minus or plus something squared. Like these are all out of order. We follow some really simple steps. The first step is move the constant to the right side. When I look at this first example, I've got x squared plus y squared plus 2x minus 4y minus 59y. So the constant is that minus 59. So our first step is always going to be to move any constant to the right side. So now let's rewrite what we have. We have an x squared plus y squared plus 2x minus 4y equals 59. Our next step is to get your x's and y's together. And we're gonna, I know that sounds very general, get your x's and y's together, but I'm gonna show you specifically how you want that to look. So you want your x's to come first and you want it to go x squared, then plus two x. And then you want it to go y squared minus four y. So we wanna group the x's together and then group the y's together. So that would look like x squared plus 2x, and now our y's. So y squared minus 4y equals 59. Okay, now we're ready for our third step. So our third step says complete the square twice. I do a whole separate video on actually completing the square and that process, and I'll link that above if you wanna um, review that. But uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it here as well because we're actually doing it two separate times within one problem. So here's how it's gonna look. We're gonna have our x squared plus two x, and then you wanna do a plus and then like a box. Now we're gonna be filling in that box in just a second. Next, we'll have our plus y squared minus 4y, and then plus another box. So it's kind of like we've added blank boxes at the end of our x's and then at the end of our y's. And then we're gonna write this equals 59. Now we have to think if we're gonna add two boxes here, then we have to also add two boxes to the 59 side. We're going to actually divide the coefficient 2 by 2. And 2 divided by 2 is just 1, right? So now we're going to take that 1 and we're going to square it. And 1 squared is just 1, right? So we're going to take that answer and put it in that first box. So 1 squared is just 1. And if we add 1 over here, we have to also add 1 over there. Now we're gonna do the same thing to this negative four y. So negative four y divided by two, well that would give us a negative two, right? So what is negative two squared? Well negative two times negative two is a positive four. And if we're gonna add four here, then we have to also add four here. Now to finish this out, to write our final equation in standard form, remember on the first page that it's parentheses x 
and then you're going to take whatever is right here with its sign. So notice how that's a positive 1. We're going to write it as positive 1 squared plus parenthesis y. And then we're going to take this one. So notice that's a negative 2. So we're going to write it as negative 2 squared equals, and now to figure out what it equals, we just add up the side. So 59 plus 1 plus 4, that gives us 64. So now we're ready to say, okay, what is our center and what is our radius? So our center, this looks just like the first ones, right? The ones we did on the first page. Our center, remember, we always take the opposite sign of what we see. So that's a plus 1, so it's a negative 1. And that's a minus 2, so we write a positive 2. And for our radius, remember that this is our r squared. So r squared equals 64. And then we take the square root of both sides to get just our radius. So the square root of 64 is 8. So our center is negative 1, 2, and our radius is 8. It just took us a bit more work to get there. Let's do one more example of these. Remember, our first step is move the constant to the right side. So in this case, my constant is a negative 23. So I want to add 23. So let's rewrite this. We've got x squared plus 6x. And notice, I want you, before we even continue with our rewriting, notice I actually already have step two done in this particular example. They wrote my x's together and my y's together in what they originally gave me. So I can go ahead, if I want to be proactive and just save writing and save space, I could go ahead to this step and start adding those boxes in, right? Because it's already in the right order. So x squared plus 6x plus box plus y squared plus 14y plus box equals, and then what, 0 plus 23 is 23, plus box, plus box. So if you want to save time and save space, that's a way to go ahead and add those boxes in when you're moving the constant over. Just saves a little time. Now we're ready for our completing the square stuff. So remember we take this 6x, just the one with the x to the first, we divide 6 by 2. 6 divided by 2 would give me 3. Now we take that number and we square it. Whatever our answer is, is what goes in that box. So 3 squared is a 9. And if we put a 9 here, we have to put a 9 in that other first box. And now we do the same thing with 14. So we say, what is 14 divided by 2? Well, 14 divided by 2 is 7. And 7 squared goes in that box. So 7 times 7 is 49. And if we put a 49 in this box, we have to put it in the other box as well. So now we're actually ready to write our equation in standard form. Remember, we start it with the parentheses x, and then we take whatever number is in that parentheses with its sign. So that's a positive 3. So we put a positive 3 squared plus parentheses y, whatever number's in there with its sign. So positive 7 squared equals 23 plus 9 plus 49 is 81. So now our center of our circle, remember we take the opposite signs of our h and k values. So this is a plus 3, so we make it a minus 3. And a plus 7, so we make it a minus 7. And then our r squared is 81. But we want to just know r. We want to know the radius. So we take the square root of both sides, and we get r equals square root of 81 is 9. Okay, here's one for you guys to try. I will post the answer in the video description below. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.